I'm really excited about this next component of the, the U Talk series today because this is an area that I'm very passionate about. We have this great team that we've assembled about developing next generation diagnostic tools for chronic wasting disease. But before I introduce our speaker, I wanted to talk a little bit more about this effort and I want to talk about what we are doing about CWD. The reason why I emphasized we is that I'm talking about here scientists and researchers at the University of Minnesota and I've bold doing because I, I think it's so important that in order, to, um, in order to confront CWD, we must have researchers in the laboratory, we must have boots on the ground, we need to be doing research in the field. And so we can have, this, we're here today for educational outreach and that is so important to get the message out, but what we also need to have are people working in laboratories and people in the field collaborating with stakeholders like the DNR and Board of Animal Health. So CWD requires an immediate and intense research effort that requires lab work, field work, interdisciplinary teams. I'm, I'm, I'm from the start, I've, I've been in Minnesota for about a year now. Um, I grew up in South Dakota. I, um, I think it's so important that everybody working on this issue, whether it's DNR, Board of Health, um, servant farmers, deer hunters, researchers, we all have to come together and understand this disease and we have to come up with plans to combat this together. I think it's critically important. And uh, as uh, we as scientists move forward, it's, it's so important that we collaborate with the DNR and Board of Mental Health and that's for a number of reasons. We have to dovetail, we have to dovetail. And so anything that we develop in the laboratory, we wanna make sure it can have a, an immediate impact on the ground. So research um, that needs to be done to understand the unique aspects of CWD, this includes infectious dose, environmental prion levels, soil interaction, transmission routes. This is, these are critical research efforts that we have to devote time and energy to as scientists at the U. We also need to understand the level of prions in venison processing plants, prion strain variation, future risk to humans. Those are really important questions. Um, it's estimated that uh, between 15 to 20,000 CWD positive deer are consumed in this country annually. What is that? What, what risk is there? And that's, that's anticipated to increase about 20% per year. So we really need to understand this disease and we need to um, take a closer look at, at any, any, how these, these prions operate and if there's any future risk to, to humans. So I'm really excited to share with you that uh, within the College of Veterinary Medicine um, here at the University of Minnesota, we're establishing this Minnesota Center for Prion Research and Outreach. This is MinPro. This is going to be an incubator for cutting edge prion research. Faculty and staff of MinPro are going to be dedicated to devising new and innovative technologies and strategies to combat the spread of CWD. Uh, we're going to have teams in the laboratory, teams in the field working on a variety of research questions. And so our immediate projects uh, We'll focus on CWD diagnostic development, but also predictive modeling of CWD. We have a grant proposal in with the DNR now, looking at predictive modeling of CWD in the state, ecological remediation strategies, carcass management, even therapeutic development. There are research avenues, uh, and this is in the published literature, where we can explore methods to block that prion conversion. It's not science fiction. There's, there's evidence out there that that can be done. We just need more people working on that question and try to develop novel therapies for CWD. So we need action on those research topics. There's a critical need right now, and you heard um, both Roxanne and Lou mention this in their talks. We need to develop new CWD diagnostic tools. We need to provide a real-time view of where chronic wasting disease in Minnesota that requires uh, tools, uh, diagnostic tools that are able to detect those prions in a variety of samples. It's not just uh, live animals, it's hunter harvested deer, and it's also the environment. So we need to do that to help prevent CWD venison from entering our food supply. This is an example of a mobile DNA or an RNA sequencing laboratory that I've put together. Uh, we deployed this at Itasca earlier this summer. It fits into two suitcases. And we're able to sequence uh, tick-borne pathogens right there in Itasca State Park. So that was proof of concept. I took this laboratory to Borneo, to Malaysia, about three weeks ago. And we were able to generate about 14 billion bases of DNA sequence data in the jungle of Borneo. So the idea that we can leverage technology like this, this technology exists. 
We have small devices, this big, biosensors, that are able to generate massive amounts of data. This is all based on microfluidics. We can leverage discovery, we can leverage technologies like this and apply them to issues like chronic wasting disease. This is why we've put together a team of researchers looking at this, a team of researchers that knows how to engineer devices like that. So we've secured over $2 million in 2019 and 2018 and 2019 to support new diagnostics, and this is through the Minnesota Extension Rapid Egg Response Fund, but also Minnesota legislature through the LCCMR funds. Thank you so much, thank you, we needed that that um, energy, we needed those funds to be able to get up and running, to establish MinPro and to start the research projects uh, that I just highlighted. So our goal is to develop a prototype of an advanced CWD diagnostic approach in two years. Prototype within two years. I'm not proposing that we're gonna develop something like what you just saw in the next slide and we're going to hand that out to as many hunters and servant farmers as we can within two years. No, that's not realistic. What, we, what our team is saying, what we've said from the start is, we're going to develop a prototype in two years to try to provide um, a rapid uh, test that can be then modified and shared more widely after that. So we have a diverse team um, exploring uh, uh, how to do that with multiple research avenues.